I'm the engagement manager at RP Fighting Blindness, and bear with me, I don't usually use PowerPoint, so there we go, it works. So I'm going to talk to you about what we do and how we um, help patients to get involved in medical research and our support services. So we are a medical research charity and a patient group, and we exist to do two things. We're patient-led, and we're there for everyone with RP, other inherited retinal dystrophies, and related syndromes. And I'm saying that at the top of this because you'll find out why as I go through, because the, the world of RP is changing. We do two very important things. We stimulate and fund cutting-edge research to help get treatments from clinical trials to patients. We also provide essential information and support, practical and emotional, to people affected by this group of conditions. So I'll talk about the research first, since I started with that. So our medical research programme. We fund gene therapy research and stem cell research currently, gene therapy trials here in London, and through our Innovation Award, we are funding stem cell research in Newcastle, which is all very exciting. Our current fundraising appeal will allow us to fund an extra project in our 40th anniversary year, next year, 2016. Now, the biggest thing at the moment for us is our RT RP genome project, and I hope you'll find that exciting. A year ago, in 2014, in collaboration with and co-founded with by Fight for Sight, we launched our largest funded project to date at £1.2 million. A hugely ambitious project. It created a consortium to bring four leading genetic ophthalmology centres together in Leeds, London, Manchester and Oxford and is coordinated by Professor Graham Black in Manchester. It aims to facilitate greater collaboration and sharing of patient data, essential in development of clinical trials and future access to treatments, important to us all, I'm sure you'll agree. Other centres will eventually be able to join with a view to establishing a national patient data resource. An investment in the development of genetic testing and streamlining, streamlining processes in the search for the remaining genes. So now I have an update which I only got yesterday, so hot off the press. Um, I already knew all the background, but I didn't know what was happening today, what had happened now, so I've got that. So having overcome significant hurdles, administrative and political, we're off to a flying start. As a result of the spirit of collaboration, the team has already found their first new form of retinal dystrophy and published the paper. I think that's pretty impressive because I understand it takes ages to publish the papers. They have established the most cost-effective suppliers of next generation gene sequencing and already the cost of sequencing has dropped enabling more samples to be done this quarter at no extra cost so our money's going further you'd be glad to hear so instead of 60 samples they were able to send off 72 and it didn't cost anything additional highlights have been the great collaborative working sharing tips on methods and interpretation of results all the politics have been put aside, with the team working together to maximise their ability to find answers for us, the people that really matter after all. More is done, money is saved, whilst ensuring that the methods used remain at the cutting edge. It's early days, but the RP, Fighting Blindness and Fight for Sight Consortium is working effectively, and Professor Chris Inglehern is quietly confident in Leeds, is quietly confident that they will discover many new kinds of retinal dystrophies. He also believes that by continuing, we will generate huge pressure for greater access to genetic testing for retinal dystrophies on the NHS, a priority for so many of us in this room today. Adapting to change in technology. This is where I came at the beginning when I explained it wasn't just RP. With greater knowledge, genetic testing and an accurate diagnosis come changes in, te in terminology. Possibly you get more specific terms, but they're confusing. I'll give you a very quick example. Identical twins came to us because they'd been diagnosed separately with different consultants in different cities, and one had been told he had RP, and the other one was told he had a retinal dystrophy, and they thought they had two different conditions, were totally, totally confused by it. Such a simple thing. RP, of course, is a retinal dystrophy. The terminology is confusing, but I've also met people that with some genetic testing have been re-diagnosed and told they don't have classic RP. 
For us, that's an issue if it stops people identifying with us. We are the patient group for inherited retinal dystrophies. And actually, another one springs to mind today. I'm calling it inherited retinal dystrophies. Other people call it retinal degeneration, um, disease and disorder. All Ds, funny enough. So they all fit into the IRD, but the end word changes. Um, so it's just to be aware that sometimes different terminology is used by different people doesn't mean you don't belong to RP fighting blindness. So we're your patient group, basically. Hope and expectations, timeframes, media hype, internet. We've all seen the news. We saw it just last week, I think, about the stem cells. It is really exciting. I remember being told, because I have RP in my family, there'd never be anything they could do. It's now when, not if, but it's still not tomorrow. Or yesterday would have been nice, but it's still not tomorrow. And I think it's very easy, especially when we're all quite desperate to have something, to, to understand, and you'll hear all that today, I don't need to, to go on about that from the professors today, what it means, how exciting it is, and what a long, long way we've come, but that we still have some way to go. Um, so being realistic about expectations, and that's partly our job, I think, to make sure that we are truthful and honest and positive, because it is positive and exciting. It's quite a balance, I think. Um, so the future is promising. We're on a journey of discovery, so stick with us and hold on tight. Okay, engagement programme. That's what we do. So the other important aspect of our work, raising awareness. We all know lots of people that have never heard of our group of conditions. Um, the research holds such exciting promise for us for the future. And in the meantime, we live in the here and now with the everyday issues presented by our group of conditions. We work to raise awareness of these conditions, holding events around the UK, including patient information days, seminars, and our annual conference in June. Our information support services, we have two helplines, telephone and email. And they, we have trained volunteers on those helplines who all know what it's like to live with it. They are affected by RP or retinal dystrophy in some way. Either they have a child with it or they have it themselves. Because we know how important that is to people. It's the second question we are always asked on those helplines. Do you have RP yourself? It matters that the person you're phoning, especially if it's an emotional call, knows where you're coming from and has been down. I face some of those issues as well. So that really matters to people. We have a telephone befriending service for people that want more one-to-one -one ongoing contact. Again, trained volunteers. We have local groups around the country. And here in London, we have a young professionals group, which is really inspirational and positive. And you'd be really pleased to hear, as I was, there's no upper age limit. So you can get in if you want. Um, we have a magazine, a quarterly magazine, a fantastic website. Mike Michaelides here has written most of it, I think, perfectly. So, um, but it is amazing. Professionals and patients use it. We get great feedback about it. From that, you can link to the patient pathway. Again, a great tool. Please, I encourage you to visit it. And we have our social media, which is thriving. We're constantly seeking to improve and develop services. And to do this, we work in collaboration. Oh, I nearly flipped the slide. It's still on this one, sorry. I told you I couldn't do PowerPoint. Um, we work collaboratively with others, including eye clinic liaison officers, sensory support teams, universities, teaching hospitals, and other sight loss organisations. And anybody that knows me knows I will talk to anybody forever about RP. So if you get me in the corner, you will walk away. I can see the gentleman I was speaking to earlier. Walk away with more information than you will ever want to know about it. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Um, and developing a community for us, for people with RP and the other, all the other conditions. Um, because it's just important that we all are a group, that we're not fragmented. We are a lot of group diverse conditions, but we are one group and we need to sort of stick together because there's going to be some stuff we're going to have to raise in the future when it comes to getting treatments and accessing things, I'm sure. Making a life-changing difference. High quality information, early intervention and good onward referrals and support can make a life-changing difference. And they're not just words, we see it constantly working with healthcare professionals through our helpline. The difference, I, I can't tell you the difference from having a call that's about driving, 
employment, all serious issues, your child's education through to someone self-harming, someone who's suicidal. That's the range, thankfully not every day, that's the range of issues that our volunteers deal with and they do an amazing job. Um, and you can just ring up because you want to say hello, I guess, too. Um, an example of a good onward referral, and this is a real bugbear of mine, is genetic counselling. For anyone diagnosed with a genetic condition, it doesn't happen everywhere routinely. And I have met people that have never were diagnosed years and years ago and have never had it mentioned to them. It does... It is important. That's that's the way to other things. That's to get in your family history, understanding. You know, you don't get discharged from those clinics. They see you as a family. It, it's amazing. It's amazing. And finally, stay in touch. Because we can. We get information all the time. We can signpost you. We can update you on things. Stay in touch. Sign up for our magazine. Go on our website. If you do nothing else, visit our website. And just this slide has just got telephone number for the helpline, email helpline, the office, and email the office. Um, but I'm here all day with the stand, so all the literature and everything is on there. And finally, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. That, that, was, that was super. Are there any questions for Sue? Presumably, RP doesn't include AMD. I'm, I'm very novice learning about all of this. So. No. AMD, age-related macula, that's it's macula. It's, um, yes, it's yeah. different. I don't mind. No, that's fine. To no, 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 that's, that's that fine. Further. I'm just yeah. helping my way out the fog. Yes. That's fine. I mean, we Thank do you. work closely with the macula society because there is some crossover yeah. with things like juvenile um, star guards, for example. Yes. We, we have, you wouldn't believe the amount of people that belong to lots of different organisations, especially with the syndromes, yeah. because they get one thing specialised from one exactly. and then they get other stuff from us. And that's common, absolutely fine. Common support that could yes. be so that's back to the collaboration one again. to the other. That's yeah. fine, thank you. Okay. Much. Hello, I've got a patient uh, who has got star guards disease, uh, but uh, she, her family, none of the family have it, it's just her and her sister. Uh, how do we explain that? I thought it was uh, hereditary. Yeah, yes, it is hereditary, but but in fifty percent of cases there is no other family history, so it depends on how it is inherited. But half the time there there won't be any other family members that All are right. affected. That doesn't mean it it isn't inherited. Okay. Um, now I've got another patient who's got had Stargardt's disease since she was a child, and her brother's also got the condition. Um, she was asked about, well, she asked for the gene therapy, but I believe at the moment she's got MS and she's been refused the treatment because I think of the medication she is taking. Can you enlarge on that a little bit, please? If, if you're asking gene therapy for Stargardt disease, mm -hmm. so, so there, there's one trial that's happening, a gene therapy trial for Stargardt disease, but uh, and that the two centres doing that are in Paris, France and Portland, Oregon. Yes. Um, and they're recruiting locally, mm -hmm. so they won't be recruiting from other countries. Okay. It's certainly possible other conditions you have may yes. make it not in your best interest yes. to participate in the mm -hmm. trial. You're right. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> One more question, sorry. Is uh, Now, this couple have, uh, the lady's got RP. Um, she's got a child, but they want to have other children. What are the possibilities of her children getting the, the RP? The best thing would be to see her in clinic, for her to see an inherited retinal disease specialist. Sure. To, there may be features of her condition that would mm -hmm. allow a prediction of the, the way it's inherited. Okay. Or we may need to see other members of the family to make that Okay. distinction and or we may need to do genetic testing so mm -hmm. it, it, it it's case by case but she would okay. need to be ideally seen by an inherited retinal disease specialist Lovely.